pay Really the only thing that gon' be normal is distribution Normal folks gon' infuse some Optimize your lineups and you feed the rest, you mute them Turning it up, these numbers are loud Peeping this game from a Nimbus is wild Making it, making it rain While I embrace all this risk, I'm insane uh. Talking about that best bell I'm the best, best, best tell Into the next world Guess I got next still Best bell, I'm the best, best, best till Into the next world Guess I got next still We are here It's week number nine And we're ready to crush some start, sit Questions for you tonight I'm Bradley Stalder This is the Best Bell Fantasy Podcast and live stream And here I am Here we are Ready to attack week number nine we had thursday night football a couple nights ago it was a little underwhelming Traylon burks obviously suffering a pretty significant head injury deontay johnson the king of ppr fantasy scores a touchdown for the first time since you know big ben threw him one so we've got some positives there derrick henry still looked like his old self will levis even though he didn't put up a strong stat line didn't throw a touchdown he had one interception he looked the part. He looked like he was capable. The offensive line for the Tennessee Titans is one of the worst in the NFL. And the defensive line for the Pittsburgh Steelers was at full strength. So it made sense that his stats weren't as high. I had him ranked at quarterback 14. I felt like there was like a threshold that, you know, at this point, you're taking dart throws at quarterback twos. And, and you know, he's hyper-targeting DeAndre Hopkins, which is the right thing to do. It's just a matter of is he going to get the touchdown or not? He was stopped short of the red of the end zone a couple times, but better days ahead for Will Levis. I am here for the Will Levis mid to high end quarterback two moving forward. He passes the eye test, and I know that some people have gone on Twitter said, "Oh, don't crown him king yet. Don't anoint him yet. We can anoint him. He looks the part." We knew right away Zach Wilson wasn't the answer. We knew right away you know, that there are other first-round quarterbacks. They just don't look the part. <laughs> Will Levis, not even a first-round quarterback, second-rounder, looks like he deserves to have the NFL starting position at quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. He passed the eye test. Like, you can throw any stat you want. You just watch the game. He looks way more composed than any of the other rookie uh, quarterbacks, uh, you know, that that have struggled, that we've seen historically struggle. He passes that eye test. I think better days are ahead. Let's not, like, worry too much about that. Okay. This is a start-sit show. So, in the chats, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or anywhere else, Make sure you guys drop your start sit questions in the chat and I will be sure to answer them. I'm here for about an hour and then at 9 p.m. I'm going to jump on the player profiler channel for time with one of my best friends. <laughs> one of my best friends in the industry, a, a great guy, one of the top rankers in the, uh, in, in the fantasy football industry, Billy Muzio. Billy and I are actually back to back. Uh, for representing player profiler in the fantasy pros accuracy rankings contest. We are respectively 29th and 30th in that contest out of over 200 rankers. So we're giving you elite advice when I'm done here, go over to the player profiler channel at nine, uh, nine o'clock Eastern. And we're going to give you some great rankings tips as well. So let's kick it off with E. Should we start CJ Stroud? Or Joe Burrow. And I know that you know we were let down, number one, by C.J. Stroud last week. But also, Joe Burrow looks like himself. He looks back. And that's why we need to have a lot of confidence. Not only is this game projected to be a high over-under, but also uh, we've seen over the last however many games, Joe Burrow play like his Pro Bowl self. He has the calf injury in the the rearview mirror. I have Joe Burrow at quarterback five for this week. CJ Stroud is at eight. So I understand, but it's clearly Joe Burrow over Stroud. I'm not getting cute. Buffalo's defense has struggled. This will be the first week with Buffalo and Rasul Douglas, the new cornerback acquired from the Green Bay Packers for the third round pick at the trade deadline. The, the Bills defense has, has struggled not because of bad play, but because of injuries, right? Ed Oliver has missed some games. Matt Milano has missed some games. Tredavia, uh, 
Tredavious White has missed some games. There have been injuries to this team that have hurt their defense. And of course, Josh Allen dealing with the, the shoulder injury, the AC joint injury. Uh, so I, I understand um, that the Buffalo Bills have historically usually been a pretty strong defense, but let's not get cute. We're starting Joe Burrow this week. Okay, B the MC. Should we go with the questionable Josh Downs or Chuba Hubbard? And this is news because Chuba Hubbard was just named the starter for the Carolina Panthers, despite the fact that Miles Sanders has his injuries in the rearview mirror as well, just like Joe Burrow. But not like Joe Burrow, Miles Sanders has not played well. Now that he is removed from those injuries, Joe Burrow has. And so there's a new starter in Carolina, and that is clearly Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard has played like a capable starting running back. He's catching passes out of the backfield. He's converting some touchdowns. He's handling the workload. He is not an impediment to this Carolina Panthers offense. Miles Sanders clearly is. He's not breaking tackles. He's not making guys miss. His PFF rush grade is extremely low. And I mean, last week, he only got a couple carries, despite the fact that he was healthy. So Chuba Hubbard, we expect to continue to get the majority of carries. And Josh Downs carries this questionable tag right now. He is very questionable uh, to be determined whether he's going to play. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Shefty tweet, you know, tonight of whether Josh Downs is expected to play or not. Uh, a midweek injury popping up, cropping up in the middle of the week is not what we want to see. So if I'm leaning one way, it's Chuba Hubbard. We get more guaranteed volume, and we don't have to worry about a re-aggravation of an injury that could be in the way of Josh Downs. For reference, I have Josh Downs at wide receiver 32 tentatively for the week, and that's in half PPR. Uh, you can find my rankings at bestbellfantasy.com slash weekly dash rankings, or you can just go to bestbellfantasy.com. And then at the top, it says rankings, click on it. And I give you a lot of different rankings, click on the weekly ones. Um, and then throughout the off season, I'll be updating the other ones for 2024. As we get into the rookies, the rookie drafts, mock drafts, etc. I'll have all of those things up there, but for right now, check out the weekly rankings, bestballfantasy.com. And you can go to the rankings. For reference, Chuba Hubbard is my running back 19 against Indy. Indy is not a difficult matchup. Typically, running backs play very well against the Indianapolis Colts. And so I have Chuba as a mid-pack running back, too. And, of course, if he's going to get the majority of carries, that also means he's probably going to get the goal line work. So you have the upside for touchdowns. And I like Chuba Hubbard as uh, running back 19. I could even see him sneaking up a little bit. His consensus for the week is is 19, but he was, you know, running back 31, 26, 35, 38, 7, 36. He had 15 carries against Houston, but Houston's a tough run defense. So we would expect, uh, you know, when Chuba Hubbard at least had a decent enough matchup against running backs, that was against Miami, 19 for 88 and a touchdown. He also had a reception in that game, finishes the running back seven. So I think that a happy medium between running back 30 and running back 37 or running back seven is running back 18 or so. I think that is fair uh, for Chuba Hubbard. All right. And a fair question from T Zinch, Ramondre or Hubbard. I have Ramondre at 16, Hubbard at 19. So I do have Stevenson ahead, but in full PPR, even more so because Hubbard, as much as he had been really good in the passing game last year, not replicating that fully this year. And we know what Ramondre Stevenson can do in the passing game. This is also against Washington and Washington's defense. Not very good, especially against pass catchers. Uh, we have to be encouraged by Ramondre over the last three weeks, 16 targets out of the backfield even though he hasn't eclipsed you know, more than 10 rushes in the game, he's still very, very involved in this offense. And in a game where there's going to be a lot of dink and dunks, there's going to be a lot of movement. Washington is not going to hold the Patriots you know, as bad as the Patriots offense has been. Stevenson full PPR is the play. Okay, we're going to pick one. Gus Edwards, Chris Godwin, or Rashi Rice. I think it's Godwin over Rice, 
pretty comfortably. As much as I do like Rashi Rice, and I think that this week could be the week where it's the breakout. You know, it's Kansas City in Germany for the Miami game. It's going to be a, a nice over-under. We like that. Uh, but Rashi Rice, I have at 35. Chris Godwin, I have 23. So pretty comfortably ahead in half PPR. The question is Gus Edwards then. So is it Gus Edwards or Godwin in half PPR? Let me just pull up the flex rankings. Fantasy Pros auto changes the flex rankings based on where I rank the wide receivers and running back. So we can take a look at where the, the auto is. Gus is at uh, 44th overall and Godwin is at 46th overall. So Edwards over Godwin in half PPR is the way my rankings shake out. Serendipity trick shots. Do I start Hollywood Brown over any of these guys? Downs, Myers, or Michael Thomas? So we get news that Clayton Toon is expected to be the starter. Remember, Clayton Toon had one of the best PFF passing grades last year in uh, among all college quarterbacks. Now the question is, can this translate to the NFL? And uh, it remains to be seen. It remains to be seen, but that's the risk. That's why Hollywood Brown is down at 38 for me against the Cleveland defense. Now, if this was, you know, a porous secondary like Washington, maybe we could have a little bit more optimism, but that's not something that I'm going out of my way and saying, Hey, you know what? Uh, Hollywood Brown is a must start. I'm not saying that he is definitely on the flex consideration radar, given the court rookie quarterback and Cleveland defense, which we know is one of the best defenses in the NFL downs. I do have ranked ahead. I also have Myers ranked ahead and Michael Thomas. I have ranked ahead as well. So, uh, if I had to pick any of these Myers is the pick out of the four, I have Myers ranked at quarter at wide receiver 28 against the New York Giants this week. So, yes, those guys over Hollywood, given the rookie quarterback and the Cleveland matchup. Okay, running back question. We've got full PPR. So the good thing about my rankings is you can go to bestballfantasy.com, click on rankings that's in the middle. You'll just see in the banner in the middle of the website. Click on rankings, go down to weekly rankings. And if you you can look at my rankings compared to the expert consensus, some players I have higher, some players I have lower. And you can look and see. And you can also toggle the wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs between half PPR, full PPR, and standard, which is really nice too. That can meet all of your needs. So, but for half PPR, just for the sake of Wolfgang, just for you. Aaron Jones, Zach Moss, or Gus Edwards. We did see Moss take a, a tick down. And also we saw a DNP this week for Moss as well. And of course, Jonathan Taylor on the upswing. Right, Taylor this past week, 10 fantasy points, 12 for 95 with a catch for two yards. He did finish as the running back 21 against New Orleans, but we know New Orleans is always a tough defense. But against Cleveland, 18 for 75, 3 for 45 receiving, and had the touchdown. Jonathan Taylor, the consensus running back, 6 for this week. Are we going Moss, who I have at running back 21, Gus Edwards at 20, or Aaron Jones at 18. And based on the rankings, Aaron Jones, the Green Bay coaches said that they want to get Aaron Jones more involved and they're going to unleash him, so so to speak. I'll believe it when I see it. There's a lot of malarkey coming out of Green Bay. I just, I don't believe it. Call me a skeptical Packers fan. But I need to see consistent usage, consistent game plan, consistent execution from the Green Bay Packers, not just their players, but also the coaches, because the coaches are not putting the players in the, their right situations to succeed. So Aaron Jones, I do have a hire because he's always a candidate to break off a big play, a 40-yard touchdown, take one to the house, 
Like this is a player who always has that within his range of outcomes. Gus Edwards is very limited, especially in full PPR. Gus Edwards doesn't catch anything. That is not his game. He is a between the tackles grinder who can get you four and a half to five yards every single carry, but he's not something special. Or Zach Moss, you know, coming into week number nine or coming into week number eight was the second leading rusher in the NFL. So there has been some special plays by Zach Moss this year, even with some of the increased work and load from Jonathan Taylor. So Aaron Jones. Fantasy Football Academy, shout out to y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Dotson, Rice, or Singletary for the flex? Ooh, okay. Yeah, we let's pull up the, the Singletary for running back. I have Singletary at... Where did I moved him up? But where did he end up? Singletary is at running back 28 for me right now. That may rise a little bit, but I could see him being you know, a back end running back to flex consideration for right now. Tampa Bay is, is a tough front seven. Vitavea is questionable. So that may shift some things as well. Uh, we'll see. Vea was out last week. Uh, that does play a part. Rice. I said, I, I had him at about wide receiver 36 and Dotson as well. And I know Dotson's coming off a big game, wide receiver 39. So I have Rice over Dotson. And then the question of Singletary, probably if we get news that there's any movement about Vita Vea, uh, we probably can move Singletary up, and that would be enough to bump Rice um, out of the flex spot for right now. Rashi Rice as the lead and best wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think that's the move here. Uh, you know, there's, there's questions of is Singletary actually a good rusher? Uh, he certainly wasn't a good pass catcher when he was with the bills. He got volume, you know, pass volume with the bills, but it was not effective. If you, one of the worst yards per route run, one of the worst PFF rushing grades of, uh, any running back, you know, over the last couple of years. So that's not a player that is going to be super effective, but if you need a spot start for volume, like if you're in half, P, if you're in standard, probably a better chance to get a touchdown. But I like the shootout potential and the PPR, even half PPR upside of Rice in uh, in what could be a really fun game in Germany. All right, Wolfgang is following up with a uh, a question regarding Josh Allen. I had mentioned Josh Allen dealing with the shoulder injury. He didn't practice a lot this week. That's not unusual for Josh Allen, but he is expected to play. I have Allen at quarterback two for right now. I have Prescott at nine, so there is a clear distinction between Allen and Prescott. I understand the Allen is kind of trending down a little bit, and Prescott obviously last week getting touchdowns to Ferguson and to CD lamb. Those were big deals for his fantasy value for sure. Like spike week King. We know Dak Prescott is underrated when it comes to the spike weeks, uh, but I still have Allen ranked ahead of Prescott for this week. I'm not getting cute Wolfgang. Okay. Uh, KJ Osborne or Shahid or Jahan Dotson for the flex. Just a reminder for all y'all, if you want to check out the website, bestballfantasy.com, you can go to the rankings, weekly rankings tab, and you can see my rankings. And I, I do updates throughout the week and the weekend. So one last update will probably be tomorrow before the games. So check those out. But remember, KJ Osborne has Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall, the quarterback, BYU quarterback, uh, that was Puka Nakua's quarterback in college. So if that means anything to you, I have Dotson at wide receiver 39, as I said. Rashid Shahid, I have at 43. So Dotson over Shahid. And then KJ Osborne, I have at 47. So we have Dotson, Shahid, and then Osborne is how I ranked him. Okay. Would you trade Jacoby Myers for Hubbard full PPR? Depends on your needs, right? 
If you need a running back two, Hubbard's probably going to be a solid running back two moving forward. He definitely has earned this starting role. He has not given indications that he's going to give it up. And Miles Sanders hasn't given any reason for the Carolina Panthers to move away from a decision that Jay, they just made. Right? It would require Chuba Hubbard to break down or get injured for him to be not be worth it. Now, we also have questions of, is Aiden O'Connell any good? Because Aiden O'Connell is going to be the quarterback moving forward for the Las Vegas Raiders. So Jacoby Myers, we, we do have questions. We want to see what Aiden O'Connell has. We're not convinced. We are not fully convinced. So I would take Hubbard if you need a running back and you have a glut of wide receivers. But this is full PPR. And if you need some flex plays, especially because you're on your bye week and you, your bye weeks are hurting, you need some wide receiver started, starters, I get it. Jacoby Myers, I have him at wide receiver 28 this week. And he's going to be uh, a wide receiver two slash three, like that type of borderline wide receiver moving forward until we see significant shifts one way or the other. That's how I'm going to value him. All right, KJ Frederick, which two running backs should I start? Should I start Chuba? Should I start Devin Singletary? Zach Charbonnet? Or should I go Roshan Johnson? Now, looking at the rankings, I have Chuba at 19, Singletary down at 28, Charbonnet all the way down at 39, and Roshan at 35. So rankings, Chuba, Singletary, Johnson, and Charbonnet. Chuba, I expect to get the, the majority of the volume. I think he's been playing very well. Uh, Devin Singletary historically has not played very well, but I could see them being pretty close. Uh, maybe I do need to move up Singletary a little bit over the Kareem Hunts of the world. But it's going to be hard for me to move Devin Singletary over like Jerome Ford against Arizona or Daryl Henderson against, against Green Bay. Like the Rams had to abandon the run in the game against Dallas because they were getting blown out so badly. But you can run on Green Bay. That That is a team that you can very much run on. So it's going to be hard for me to say, you know what, Devin Singletary against a tough front seven of Tampa over a very porous Green Bay Front seven, very generous defense against the run. You know, it's going to be hard for me to rank uh, rank Singletary over Henderson at that point. And then we're getting into the uh, low end running back two era. So we're, we're still going with Chuba Hubbard uh, over any of those others. Should we start Godwin over Puka if Stafford sits? Yeah, that's definitely the move. Puka is dealing with an injury himself. And the expected starting quarterback for the L.A. Rams, if Stafford sits, is Brett Rippon. That's not going to get it done. Okay, so yeah, you're you're starting you're starting Godwin over Puka if Stafford sits. You might just start Godwin over Puka straight up. That's not how I have them ranked, but it's close enough where I could you know. Let, let me percolate a little bit over the night. Uh, but like Puka, I have at 21. Godwin, I have at 23. So it's very close. And I know Green Bay secondary, you know, Jair Alexander has been dealing with some issues. He's not himself. And Puka Nakua, he, like if you rewatch the film, there were three or four opportunities where Puka Nakua, like, it was just the wrong side of variance for Puka Nakua. In fact, the Ben Skoranek touchdown was a play that Puka Nakua was just resting for. And that stat that Skoranek ran the route that Nakua was, was supposed to run, but Nakua just needed a, like a couple snap breather. Like it just happens, you know? And so <laughs> Skoranek was open and he got the touchdown. So Puka Nakua, there were plenty of opportunities throughout the game where that particular role was very useful. Uh, but if Stafford plays, I still am a little pessimistic that Stafford can last the whole game, right? Um, based on the injury, the UC, uh, UCL thumb injury, the issue is thumb swelling and grip of the football. And so if Stafford has trouble gripping the football, 
it's not going to be as accurate. It's not going to have as much touch. And Puka Nakua, he's played very well, but the Rams receivers need a little bit of touch to be able to get open. Like Stafford leads his receivers very well. That that's why they're successful. And so my concern is that even if you know, I've Nakua moved down significantly, you know, this week down to 21. I had previously been ranking him in the tens and twelves, et cetera. Um, but at 21, you know, back end wide receiver two, I'd rather have Godwin without, you know, the health issues at this point. Okay. If you like the content, you found this helpful. You're new. Make sure you guys are smashing that red subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, if you have more start sit questions, you can certainly pop them into the chat for sure. That's what I'm here for, for the next, you know, 25, 30 minutes or however long. Um, and once we're done, once I'm done on here, head over to the player profiler channel where you can get some of the best fantasy football advice, start sit advice in the industry between myself and Billy Muzio. We are ranked 29th and 30th respectively out of the fantasy pros actually rankings contest overall. I'm eighth at tight ends out of 200 rankers. Billy has been on fire as of late. He's had two top seven weeks in a row, and he's looking for a third one. So definitely check out Player Profiler at 9 p.m. Billy and I are going to be hopping on the Dominator, and we're going to crush it for about a half hour. Get your start sit questions answered there, too. Blue JM. Hey, Bradley, Mr. Vids, where have you been? Yeah, <laughs> it's been a busy, busy week. We had conferences this week, and that was really exhausting for for me, I, I don't know if y'all know this, but I work for a high school um, and part of my role is supervising teachers. And so one of the things that obviously is you're supervising teachers, there's extra leg work that goes into um, the end of the quarter and grades being due. And of course, navigating some behavior things you know, with the students, we got to got to deal with all that. So. Uh, you know, there have been some things this week that were just a little bit busier and that's okay. I want to make sure I get on at least once a week to answer your start sit questions. Make sure we are all good. I know some of y'all really love the small videos, uh, that I post. And so, you know, I, I try to get as many as I can out, but you know, I'll talk with my production team, see if we can get some more out next week. <laughs> all right. Angel Herrera with Drake London out. How are you feeling about Mac Hollins? Yeah, I mean, not uh, not great. Mac Collins is nothing special, guys. Let's let's not get cute. Uh, Mac Collins right now, and this is against Minnesota, right? It's Taylor Heineke. I mean, Mac Collins is outside of the top seventy of wide receivers. We're not getting cute here. The big beneficiary of the Drake London injury, I think, is Kyle Pitts. Right, Kyle Pitts. Oh, if my rankings decide to load, Kyle Pitts, I have at tight end five for this week behind Kelsey, Andrews, Hawkinson, and Goddard. Uh, this is against Minnesota and Taylor Heineke. It, we know he's willing to take his chances. He's willing to make mistakes. He's willing to get messy. He's willing to miss frizzle the whole thing. And I mean, Desmond Ritter is just too conservative. Now, Will, our coach, our favorite coach in the NFL, right? Our favorite coach to make fun of. Arthur Smith, will Arthur Smith allow Heineke to go a little wild? That's the question that we have. And I think at least for Pitts, there's going to be a consolidated target share against Minnesota. Like Pitts is going to be the best offensive player outside of Bijan Robinson on the field. And we know how Arthur Smith treats Bijan Robinson. So uh, hopefully it's just Kyle Pitts then, you know, getting these, getting these very valuable down the field touches. Give me some Kyle Pitts. I have him ranked ahead of Jake Ferguson, ahead of Dalton Schultz, ahead of Trey McBride for this week. So I think the big beneficiary is Kyle Pitts. Maybe you'll sprinkle in a little bit of quarter of Patterson. Uh, maybe you'll sprinkle in some Van Jefferson as well. Uh, Mac Hollins. Fine. If you want like desperation, uh, you need like five points from a guy. Mac Collins has has life now, but I'm not going hog wild. I don't view Mac Collins as a handcuff wide receiver. 
like we often talk about handcuff running backs in the NFL. They immediately step in if the the starter is injured. It's a one to one replacement. That's not necessarily how it works for wide receivers, sometimes for tight ends, but not very often for wide receivers. And so I don't view Mac Hollins as a one to one replacement for Drake London in the handcuff sense. Will he get a couple percent target share bump? Sure. But I'm not saying Mac Hollins super sleeper. I mean, anything can happen. He is a big play wide receiver. All he needs is like one 40 yard catch for a touchdown for him to pay off. Right. Uh, and that's within his range of outcomes. Cause all he does is he runs go routes. He's not a refined route running wide receiver, but he can make big catches. He's a big bodied guy. He can make contested catches, but he's not a guy who's going to command like 12 targets. I would, I'll, I'll eat a sock, you know, live. If, you know, Mac Hollins gets 12 targets in this game. So, or more. Fine. The 12 or more targets, I have to eat a sock. There you go. William Watkins, thanks for tuning in. What are your feelings on Demario Douglas, the wide receiver for the New England Patriots? And this is very interesting for a couple reasons. One, Kendrick Bourne is out for the season with an ACL injury. The other sneaky piece, well, actually, there's two sneaky pieces. One, uh, so first, of course, I, I mentioned Kendrick Bourne. Second is Devontae Parker has been ruled out for this game. Another wide receiver who historically commands a 10 to 20% target share. When more in his prime, he was getting like 20 to 22%. Now it's down like 15 to 10%. But those players are both out. Now that leaves the Hunter Henrys of the world and it leaves the DeMario Douglas for the world. Uh, and so Douglas, he's projected to be the lead receiver for the New England Patriots. He ran 84.4 uh, of the routes. He had a 24.1% target share, 27% air yard share, and 29% first read share. And since week six, Washington has allowed the fourth most PPR points per target and third most receiving yards to slot wide receivers. And remember, Demario Douglas plays mostly out of the slot. So that's a player that we anticipate. This fits pretty well with the matchup. His consensus for fantasy pros right now is wide receiver 38. I have him at wide receiver 34, and I'm willing to bump him up just a little bit more with the Devontae Parker news coming out. So Demario Douglas, I think you bump up a little bit this week. He's definitely in the flex consideration and you can start worse players like Demario Douglas clearly over Mac Hollins, but uh, Demario Douglas, I have ranked ahead of Rashid Shahid, ahead of Elijah Moore, ahead of Jaden Reed and Michael Gallup. Like you're starting Demario Douglas over those guys this week over Tyler Boyd. Chuba or Moss in the flex. I have Chuba ranked higher than Moss, but it's close. It's almost a coin flip. Blue Jay. Khalil Herbert is available as a free agent. Is he worth a stash? Because he come off IR soon? Absolutely. These are the running backs that you need to be stashing. The running backs who did not lose their job because of poor performance. The only reason Donta Foreman and Roshan Johnson are getting work is because Khalil Herbert's been injured and Herbert was the better running back. He was staving off Roshan breakout, right? The only reason Roshan was getting used so much was because the Bears were getting blown out. But now the Bears are playing a little bit better. Khalil Herbert is the type of target that you need to be putting on your bench he could be having running back one, running back two weeks. And as we know, and we felt, we felt it. The Kyron Williams of the world have been hurt. The James Connors of the world have been hurt. Devon Achans have been hurt. Uh, J.K. Dobbins have been out. Like running back, we've seen them get hurt. And so if you can get a capable running back who we know when he is healthy is the starter on the team, Yes, we want Khalil Herbert. We want to be picking up these types of players for sure. So if you have spots in your bench for 
a possible RB2, that's how I would value Khalil Herbert. He's putting up some, some strong efficiency metrics before the injury and was getting a few more uh, targets and receptions. So yes, we want to be stashing the Khalil Herberts of the world moving forward. Angel Herrera, I have Fryermuth on IR. Should I start Everett or roll with Musgrave? Yeah, Everett was ruled out last week. That was frustrating because I had him ranked, but oh well, you can't win them all. I have Musgrave at 14 for this week. I have Everett at 19 at tight end. And uh, for what it's worth, I'm the eighth best tight end ranker out of 200 on the Fantasy Pros Accuracy Rankings Contest. So, yeah, give me Musgrave over Everett. Uh, it's Musgrave versus the Rams, Everett versus the New York Jets. So, yes, that's how I have them ranked. Cool. William uh, Watkins is digging deeper into the DeMario Douglas. Who do I have ranked higher, Douglas or Dotson? And for those who are just tuning in, you can go to bestbellfantasy.com go to rankings and you can see my weekly rankings and just click on it. You'll see them updated in real time uh, as I make changes. So if I make some changes tomorrow or tomorrow, right before the start of uh, before kickoff at 1 PM, or even, you know, I'll make one update tomorrow morning before the nine 30 games. So remember, we have 9.30 games in Germany tomorrow. Make sure you guys are putting those players not in your flex just in case something happens. So you want to treat those Germany game players, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins players, um, as Thursday night players, kind of. So move those players, if possible, out of your flex and put them in your starting spot, starting role, just a pro tip, right? And treat them like Thursday night players so that you have spaces to be flexible if you need to make some last minute decisions. Great. Uh, so you can go to bestbellfantasy.com and check out my rankings there, and you can toggle between half, full, and standard uh, settings. And right now, Dotson. I have at 39 Douglas. I have at 34. I am a little ahead of consensus on DeMario Douglas. Remember, this is a really positive matchup for Douglas against a Washington secondary that is really porous and really bad. And DeMario Douglas over the last few weeks, you know, we've seen six and seven targets against Buffalo and Miami. And now we don't have Devontae Parker and we don't have Kendrick Bourne. So I, I think we need to move up Hunter Henry a little bit. We need to move up to Mario Douglas. I think uh, back end wide receiver three to mid pack wide receiver three is a fine ranking for Demario Douglas. Um, and he's yet to get in the end zone as well. So I think that this is a player that we want to be ahead of the, the, the trend here. Who else is going to catch it? I mean, there's been a little bit of positive chatter about Kayshawn Booty but I'm not starting Kayshawn Booty anywhere. I don't think you would be either. Uh, even if Bill, Bill Belichick says that this has been his best week of practice, like this is not going to move the needle for me, is not going to move my booty off the bench. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. If you like the content and you found this helpful, smash the subscribe button. And make sure you guys are putting in your questions into the chat. I'm going to be on here about for about 15 more minutes. And then at 9 o'clock on the Player Profiler channel, the YouTube channel, you can go over there at 9 o'clock. And I'm going to be on there with my friend and uh, colleague at Player Profiler, Billy Muzio. Make sure you guys are checking that out at 9 p.m. Player profiler will get your start sit questions answered. Billy and I are two of the best rankers in the industry. I'm 29th. He's 30th. It's a coin flip. It's back and forth. Uh, it's great. Billy's been on fire lately. Two top seven ranking finishes over the last two weeks. I'm currently eighth among all rankers in tight end rankings. So shout out to all y'all for being so supportive, both here in Best Bell Fantasy and on the Player Profiler Network. Should you trade away Gus as a sell high? I mean, depends on what you're getting. 
<laughs> I mean, he's getting a lot of touches, and we like that, and he's getting goal line work. Justice Hill is getting some passes out of the backfield, but that's how we expected this Baltimore backfield to shake out. We expected Gus Edwards to be a between-the-tackles grinder, and we expected Justice Hill to be more of the, the third down back, the change of pace back. Right now, you know, Gus Edwards has been crushing, right? He's been running back six and the RB1 overall the last two weeks against Detroit and then against Arizona. So we want to be bullish against Arizona, you know, uh, the running backs against Arizona this week, and that's Cleveland. We need to be, you know, in on Jerome Ford. We expect he's going to be a little bit better coming off that ankle injury. And then also any Kareem Hunt, you know, Kareem Hunt is a desperation flex with, you know, some uh, – a good matchup upside. So shout out to, uh, you know, Gus Edwards for crushing over the last few weeks. He's probably, a, you know, I have him as running back 20 against Seattle. I don't think he's going to finish, you know, as a top five running back again, but there is now that within his range of outcomes, given the volume that he's been receiving. So we can't ignore it. It at least exists now, but I would still have Gus as a mid-pack running back to even in half PPR. Shout out to you, Angel Herrera. Shout out to you. Thank you for the super sticker. Uh, $2. Appreciate you doing that. It's a great way to support the channel. If you like the content and found this helpful, you can smash the subscribe button. You can also throw a couple bucks my way, just like Angel. It really does help the channel continue to grow and get better. Um, it allows me to afford certain things like a, a new microphone. It allows me to afford uh, the new camera that y'all can tell. Um, I've got this great, great setup. Now things are training the right way. There's also going to be some awesome things I'm going to be working on over the summer, uh, and the off season where you know, all of this support out of the YouTube channel is going to continue to, to, uh, to grow. So I appreciate all y'all. Okay. Uh, Blue J, um, do you think Hawkinson is going to fall off a bit since Cousins is out? Is he still top 10 tight end? The answer is yes. He's still a top 10 tight end. We're not moving away from Hawkinson as your starter. I mean, it, it's going to, we're going to have to see it before we believe it that Hawkinson is no longer top 10, right? I don't think we're, we're like hyper reacting to that. Jaron Hall, you know, one of the things that I, I have a video of Jaron Hall on the channel. I'm pretty sure it's still up um, and y'all can check it out. You can search best ball fantasy Jaron Hall. Uh, but one of the things that I said was that Jaron Hall is probably not a franchise quarterback. He's probably going to be a quality backup. He didn't have a strong arm, but he is a player that if he's given the offensive line to be successful, he will be, He'll do that. He'll he'll be able to make some throws, okay? And the Minnesota Vikings rank third among all NFL teams in pass blocking grade uh, in the NFL per PFF. So they're going to give him some time to throw, okay? I'm not worried about, uh, you know, he's, he's going to make mistakes. He's a rookie quarterback. We're going to expect that. Um, but Kirk Cousins was being given 2.69 seconds, okay? And that was mid-pack among quarterbacks, right? It was 19th out of 30. So he was given average, league average amount of time. Pass blocking was quality. So there are elements of this offense that are still going to be good. I mean, Darisaw is going to be out, right? Uh, that, that's hurting Hall. And Jefferson's out for this game. So we're not like super optimistic this first game, but he's going to get his feet wet. And I'm I'm still starting TJ Hawkinson if I have him, unless we have some other, you know, elite tight end. Like I wouldn't mind starting Kyle Pitts over Hawkinson if you're that afraid. But no, we're not like we're not starting the the Luke Musgraves over Hawkinson. Okay. We're not getting like that cute uh, in, in with regard to the TJ Hawkins and situation. We're not, we're not losing 
uh, our minds over. We're not starting Johnu Smith over Hawkinson. We're not starting Michael Mayer over Hawkinson. We're not starting, you know, Cole Komet or Tyler Conklin over Hawkinson. We're not panicking yet. Okay. That's how we're going to treat Hawkinson. We're, we're not going to really move him too much. He is my tight end three this week behind Andrews and Kelsey. John Rasur, Dotson or Dell? I mean, it, it depends probably in half PPR, full PPR standard. But I have C.J. Stroud at quarterback eight for this week. I have Sam Howell a little bit lower. But Dotson, I have at wide receiver 39. And Dell, I have at 31 against Tampa's secondary. So give me Tank Dell over Dotson. Dell is now removed from the injury report. Also, Robert Woods is out. But if you need a wide receiver with a pulse, Noah Brown. That's a deep cut wide receiver who's getting some targets over the last few weeks, especially with Robert Woods being out. I know that Tank Dell has struggled lately to finishes outside of the top 70, but I think this is an opportunity for a bounce back week for Tank Dell. And as I mentioned, Noah Brown is my wide receiver 60 for this week. And he's finished wide receiver 58 and 56 each of the last couple weeks. So if you need someone with a pulse, Noah Brown can get you like five, six, seven fantasy points. Okay. If you're desperation, like your 32 team leagues and you just need somebody. Jose says, thank you for your help on did it. Yeah. For those who are unfamiliar, you can go to the, the did it app. You can get it on Apple, on Google play. You can download did it and you can search for me. You can find me. I also have the link in this YouTube description and you can connect with me, ask one-on-one -on -one advice. And the first call is free. So use that link, get connected with me on did it. It'll be great. Look forward to connecting with y'all. Uh, Jose, obviously very happy with his experience. And um, you know, I have, how many ratings and I'm at a 5.0. Now I'm waiting for the first person to not rate me a 5.0 just to, you know, it put some humility, uh, give me some humility. But at the same time, um, and that can just be an indicator to you that you're getting some of the best advice in the industry. Um, I, I'm very thoughtful about my rankings. As I said, you know, top 30 uh, so far this year, I finished 21st this past week. I've had a couple top 15 um, finishes this year. Uh, you know, as I said, eighth right now among all rankers in tight end rankings on the season. So I've been I've been play, doing pretty well with the rankings. So make sure you check out bestballfantasy.com. Go to the rankings tab and you can see weekly rankings right there. You can check it out and I'll be updating it uh, before the 930 Germany game, 930 Eastern game. And then before the one o'clock games as well. So y'all can check out all of those. On the website, I think we're almost there. Well, guys, in about 30 minutes, I'm going to be heading over to the Player Profiler channel with Billy Muzio, and we're going to be chopping it up. We're going to have a great time. It is always great. Uh, we won't be playing the Boys Are Back in Town song, but the boys will be back in town on the Player Profiler Network on the YouTube channel there. So at 9 p.m. Eastern, check it out. Billy and I will be answering your start sit questions on the Dominator lineup lockdown edition for week number nine. If you like the content on this channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button. It's been very helpful. Your support means the world to me in being in this industry and flying solo for right now in the Best Bell Fantasy youtube channel in space i really appreciate all y'all support and the community we've been building so until next time good luck in your week nine matchups everyone well, i embrace all this risk i'm insane talking about that best bell i'm the best 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 tail into the next world guess i got next still best bell i'm the best 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 tail into the next world guess i got next still